Okay, hello guys, Joker the Fool here. Welcome back to whole review. This is going to be um, this is going to be the fourth episode, I think, and we're going to be going over daily polls 22 to 28. And um, you know, if you've watched the series before, um, you know the drill. But if uh, this is the first time watching, I'm basically going to go through. Each daily poll I do on the exclusively games forum seven at a time, go through the results, why I did it, and uh, what the community said in replies to um, each poll. So let's um, start with the first daily. Let's start with uh, daily poll twenty-two. Uh, do you play multiplayer games? And uh, you know, this is a pretty simple one. This is another one that I just thought about because a lot of games are multiplayer, always online. And I thought. You know how pervasive did that become in um how pervasive has that how, how pervasive has multiplayer become um you know f in terms of people's gaming habits so for you know, most so it seems like at least uh in this you know poll most people say they play more single player games than multiplayer games nobody said they only play multiplayer games but and uh, a few people about 14 percent said they only play single player games and then some people seven percent of people said they play um single player and multiplayer games equally and then one person plays more multiplayer than single player so smackums plays way more single player there's got plenty of uh co-op couch and online party games and online shooters to turn to uh star magician um pretty active in the polls says i mostly play single player but there's a handful of multiplayer games i like too and this is this is where I'm at. Most of uh, like my PlayStation Four, I basically exclusively use it for single player games. I don't play for online, and for the Switch, for the most part, I mean, it's mostly single player games. And a lot of PC games I have are actually single player. I don't play too many multiplayer games, but I do have a few. Like I've put over three hundred hours in Overwatch, and that's exclusively multiplayer. So we'll go. Uh, Let's see, Mad Mummy only plays single player, doesn't have time for the antics of annoying 10 year olds, or idiots of any age for that matter. I don't want to come off as ageist. Uh, Merlin says, my 90 year old grandma likes to go news and cod and trash talk everyone. Thank you for being considerate of gamers of all ages. Uh, okay, so that's uh, pretty funny. Um, yeah, so then we'll go through, uh, we'll go, let's see, Hyper Weasel says he plays more single player now, doesn't care about competitive play anymore, may not be great at it, and I never really cared about trying to be great at it, play games for fun, not so I can brag about my kids playing, yeah, yeah, for the most part, uh, I like playing games for fun, but, you know, there's, you know, a certain amount of fun, and, like, you know, for the watch, a certain amount of fun in, like, getting your rank up, not too much fun anymore, but there is uh, a certain amount of fun. Um, but that's definitely a very subjective thing. So, uh, let's move on to the 21st daily poll. Uh, when did you start gaming? I this one, a pretty simple. This was, um, you know, just I know that a lot of older guys um, are active in the EG forums, and I'm pretty young. Uh, started gaming in the early 2000s. So, yeah. So most people started gaming in the 90s, and then after that it was the 70s. Some people. Uh, no, in the 80s, and then some people in the 70s, and then one person in the uh, in the 2010s. So, the two uh, the two most people is at least you know in this forum either the 90s or the 80s. So, Keith Wallington doesn't uh, come along too often. So the first game he remembers super well is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 on the PlayStation 2. First game I bought myself before that was just Mario and Zelda games on friends console majestic bull or goat says i had consoles earlier on but i don't seriously get i didn't seriously get into video games until 97 or 98 with the n64 and the game play color had many had some good times playing super mario 64 pokemon stadium super smash bros and the uh, game boy color pokemon games back in the day so it's pretty nice um <laughs> merlin or uh, i think yeah merlin likes the meme a lot uh, which uh which i wholeheartedly encourage says he started playing in 5000 bc let's hear it for stick and rock 2 revenge of the stick well merlin if you ever watch this video i think stick and rock 2 revenge of the stick it's honestly a really shit game um it, it, they completely ruined everything from the original game you know merlin uh, i figure you know you're you're an old guy you know that better than me that you know stick and rock 2 
Okay. Okay, I can't. <laughs> I can't keep up. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Bolta, early 90s for him with Wolfenstein 3D and per Prince of Persia on PC and Sonic on the Mega Drive, also known as uh, the Genesis in the States. I know Bolta's from Europe, so he calls it the Mega Drive. Uh, um, he played a bunch of stuff on PC until about 03 when he lost interest. Uh, and for 15 years, he played only emulators and one or two games a year for a short period of time. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Shader says all of his memory, uh, all memories in life starts in the 90s. So he'll say the 90s with the old, started away with the old Nintendo. I'm going to assume either the NES or the SNES. Worked his way up to the Turbo Graphics 16, and then got a Sega Genesis, and then from that point on, never got a system and never AR, but I never felt the need to. Um, let's see, Tomologian says, I was a gamer ever since my parents stuck a Game Boy Color with Pokemon Blue in my hands. Later on in life, getting an N64 didn't change that fact one bit, but it's not like it solidified the gamer aspect of my hobby either. I was a gamer ever since I got my Game Boy Color. Still have it, by the way. I still have my old um, Nintendo DS, but that wasn't the first handle I got. I had a Game Boy Advance SP, but I lost that thing years and years ago. Let's see, yeah, Schizo Voices after I started university. I know. Shocking. Okay, so, let's see. So, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put all these in the, um, put all these polls that I talk about in the description. I do it for every video. So, um, so, yeah, so, so that way you can, you know, so that way I, you can read them in your own time. And this video isn't going to be as movie length as the other ones, or hopefully. But, Daily Poll 24, are you a backer of the Atari VCS? And I did this one because it was either, yeah, so the day before this one, the Atari VCS had gotten a delay, and I figured, I wanted to see if there was any, I wanted to ask any, you know, if anyone on the forum was a member who backed the original Indiegogo project. Um, but most people said, I did not back the Atari VCS and do not plan on buying it. I'm not an Andy Gilgo backer, but do not have enough information to decide I'm going to get the Atari VCS as the next one. And then one person didn't back the Atari VCS, but plans on, but will buy it when it releases. I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen at this point because the a company that's under the name of Atari, they've got like $9 million from that, and I've heard of that as crowd-raised capital. So, um, very skeptical, skeptical about the Atari VCS ever reaching consumer level and Merlin puts it simply but the best says the Atari VCS is a scam so so let's see Twitter says the OG Atari 2600 was the last Atari console sort of worth owning sort of worth owning ColecoVision Nintendo and most any other consoles were a better choice than whatever model Atari was making at the time no often why I'm buying an Atari console uh, yeah Twitch it definitely puts it best because with the Atari VCS What's the point in buying it? If you want to play the classic Atari games, you can go on Amazon and buy an Atari Flashback. Or if you have literally any, well, not literally, I don't think there's an Atari. There might be even an Atari, like, classics on the Switch. But uh, I know on the PS4, probably Xbox One, definitely the PC, you can play all those old games either through emulators or, you know, you just buy, like, an Atari or whatever, you know, games. And that's if you even want to play those really old games because... I mean, the only reason you want to play those old games is essentially for nostalgia, because I played a few on a flashback system that my dad got from Radio Shack years ago, and um, I had fun with, um, I think the, it was like, not, not Frogger, but it was like the one with Frog, and then you catch the fly, I forget what that one's called, I had a little bit of fun with that, but it, it's not going to appeal to anybody outside of the you know, people who originally played on the 2600, and if you were like, I really want to play my old 2600, uh, the old 2600 games, you can either buy the old system and collect for it, you can, or you can emulate it, or, you know, buy a disc on the modern consoles if you're still in the modern gaming, and if you are a modern gamer, you're probably busy playing um, modern games, or games, you know, for systems that, you know, that came out after the 2600, so I, I don't really see a place in the market for Atari because the Atari brand just isn't it isn't really relevant to too many people and for the people who it was relevant to they know that the current company is just a shell of its former self it's not even the classic Atari so there's no there's no trust there there's no reason to invest um from how I see it so I, I think you know people just I mean some people I mean it definitely you know 
got a lot of people to fund it, but I, I think some people just, um, you know, there's there's just some, there is enough people who are just so desperate to have an Atari system that they're just willing to throw money at it. But I don't think the market is, I think the market's capped out at, you know, what they were able to raise at Indiegogo. That's just how I see it. You know, maybe a few hundred thousand sales after that when it becomes an actual thing, because, you know, there are some people who are like that, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near enough, you know, of a consumer base to be, you know, even matching the Xbox One in sales. Okay, but that's, uh, that's me going on a bit of a rant. So Zoltor says he is not stupid and thus can see a scam this blatant from a million miles away. So no, I didn't back it, nor do I plan on getting it. Such even if anything gets put out at all. Nothing good will come out of the R of Tari VCS, mark my words. And I think... It's the overwhelming feeling of this um, poll. So, yeah, so that's the overwhelming response that most people to see that it's um it's going to it's going it's going to be um, a failure at worst and you know, it's going to be a scam at best and a failure at worst. No, it's going to, no, no, I, let me restate that. It's going to be a failure at best. It's going to be a horrible console that doesn't really sell much at all at best and a scam at worst. So, I think that's essentially where the community, at least the EG community, is at with this poll, or with the Atari VCS. So, the next one, um, I did, um, because the day before, Google, you know, they revealed Stadia in that big old live stream that they had at GDC. And they were pretty vague about stuff that I really wouldn't want um, them to be vague on, especially if it's a service they're going to be coming out this year, in 2019. So one of the things, you know, they talked about like all the technology and all the cool stuff that developers will be able to do in terms of like switching between our sales on the fly and um, being able to make like 1,000 person battle royale games, which does sound pretty interesting, but it's all like, oh, you know, this will be really cool and you can play on any device and we've got a controller that, you know, uses Wi-Fi to, you know, make input lag um, less of a thing, but, you know, one of the things that we never talked about was how it's going to be monetized. So I figured, why not do a daily poll asking how um, the community thinks that Stadia is going to be monetized. And, um, you know, there was a lot of, you know, things um, that people said. But, um, let's see. So, uh, but most people said that there wasn't enough information for them to make a guess or that, you know, this one, that'll be a paid subscription service only. Um, and then after that, it would be it'd be free with ads with an optional paid subscription. So what I generally would mean by this is that, like, you would get, like, maybe 1080 p or 720p60 um, streaming, you know, free. And then, you know, you see the, you know, then you basically probably have an ad before you play. And then, you know, maybe ads in terms of, like, loading screens or something like probably depends on the game like you know if you're playing something like overwatch and you're playing it free on stadia you would probably see ads while you're matchmaking if you have this free service that's i imagine how they would do it um two people said and then you know you got paid subscriptions obviously one you get rid of the ads and then two um you know you could probably get more access to the bandwidth or maybe you know you could get you know, you could run games at like 4K, 144 frames a second, you know, by using multiple, you know, cards. So you're paying to be able to essentially SLI to um, two of the um, Stadia cards or whatever the hell they'll call it. Um, you know, two people said that will be a paper game service like Steam or GOG, so... Um, which, I, I, I'm not sure if it's a likely thing that'll happen with that, because the way that they're talking about they want to have like as least friction as possible so they don't want to you know have like the next assassin's creed trailer on a youtube video then you see the little play game thing there you know it's either you're you know it's you know free with ads or you're it's like you know it's like with netflix where you know you're paying for the service and you're like oh you know this new game you know i saw on youtube and it's on stadia i already pay you know however many dollars a month for stadia to play you know these games uh what's a new one or, you know, let me play this new one and check it out, and then you just load into the game. So, there's, um, so there's that. So, two people said, um, again, two people said that it was essentially going to be free with ads, you would have the option of a paid subscription, or you could pay for a game. So, 
essentially basically every possible way I thought that you could monetize it. Um, so yeah, so it's a yeah, it's pretty divided because you know there's a lot of possible ways Google could go about monetizing Stadia, and they didn't really say much in their um, in their review. I know there's rumors flying around that you know it will just be treated with ads, but um, you know that's always um, you know but it's just rumors and leaks, and those can be a bit shady, or those can be a bit spotty. Um, better way to put it. So Zoltor says, uh, didn't notice that other option. Yeah, free with ads. If there's any truth to the BS coming out of their mouth. Pay sub option, what they're, and they are the essential purchasing games. Um, say, yeah. So Twitter says it'll be monetized some other way. You know, selling your IE and personal data. It was obviously going a bit off the rails a little bit, but, you know, Google will probably, you know, at least, you know, your gaming interests and everything, it's going to feed into, you know, you know the AdSense algorithm or AdWords or whatever whatever it's called, and that'll um and that'll get sold to advertisers like they do with basically the search engine data, the YouTube data, and everything. So I wouldn't um I wouldn't doubt that Google will take your information and use it um, um to uh, use it for uh, advertising information. So yeah, so uh, yeah, Lord uh, Bangagar says it's. He says he's assuming it's going to be subscription based because most streaming services work that way, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. More, yeah, more worried about input lag is going to be solved since there was a couple glitches. That part didn't look awesome. Maybe it was just an error issue and they'll fix it. But for the rest, I actually like what they were saying. At the very, at the very least, I'm interested to see how it goes, especially the stream connect. They explained something like each player would have a separate instance and you would get the. 100 images instead of actually everything being processed in yours. No expert here, but I would love being able to see how they accomplish this with internet connections being what they are these days. So, yeah, I, I've i said this before, but I, I tested out Assassin's Creed Odyssey in Project Stream, and it did have some issues, but it played pretty well. I'm not sure how, you know, it's going to be with streaming, like, multiple instances of the game to your one setup, but... um. Assuming that it's just a compressed video file, I, I don't think it's going to be that complicated. The biggest thing is going to be input lag, and that's definitely going to be something that Google is going to have to really get a hold on. And I hope as, you know, you know, I hope it was decent in the beta for Project Stream. It was, you know, there were some times where it was unplayable because it had so much artifacting. But in terms of input lag, it was generally pretty good, but I wouldn't want to play a multiplayer game with that sort of input lag um and everything uh, there is definitely a lot we tolerate already you know with the current you know client model that connects to a server and everything but um at least with um you know you're running the client you know that the client um uh, as long as your client runs well then you know there's some feeling of where you know it's being instant and as long as the net code net code is good you can um compensate for bad connections but with Stadia, it just feels like it's so internet dependent, and the internet really isn't where you know we want it to be um, for like really really good uh, multiplayer. So it's definitely something that I can see will be like probably really well in like 10, 15 years from now. But um, you know, for the first few years of its launch, it's definitely going to have a lot of issues. But I'm sure Google is going to stick with it because of just the massive amount of money that they're going to be able to make with it. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I'm necessarily going like the industry going that way, but Google's got the resources, they have the server farms, they want this out, and they're going to, um, you know, it's like YouTube. YouTube loses a lot of money, but just the sheer fact that it is the biggest um, video sharing website, there's an, ad, there's an advantage to having it, and there's going to be an advantage to sticking with Stadia, which I think Google is going to do. It's not going to be like a Google Plus or a Google Glass where... There really isn't too much marketability for a service or, you know, Google Glass especially, but, you know, like, um, you know, Google Plus, you know, there's a lot of, you know, alternatives for Google Plus, like Twitter and Facebook and whatever, and, you know, Reddit, but, you know, with game streaming, um, we have, we had OnLive, which was way before its time, and it wasn't by, it was by essentially a startup that got bought out by, bought out by Sony, and you've got PlayStation um, Now, I think it's called, which isn't really good but you know one of the reasons why um sony doesn't really focus on it is because they're too busy selling playstation 4s and the playstation vr to really heavily invest in um in um playstation 
in PlayStation Now. It's just something that they have because they bought on live and they wanted to use that technology. And plus, they want to give you. They, I guess they wanted to give people a way to play PlayStation Three games to sort of, you know, um, sort of keep that uh, a bit relevant. You know, when they uh, inevitably, you know, remaster, you know, the older PlayStation Three games or the, you know, PS Three and the PS PS Four, PS Five. Uh, so I don't necessarily um, think that PlayStation Now uh, or on live are indicative of, like, that's not like what cloud gaming is in its entirety. There's definitely you know, you know, Google taking a shot at it where this is going to be basically the only thing they're doing with gaming other than YouTube gaming. And the fact that, you know, Google is, you know, they've got world, they've got servers all over the world. They've got, well, they've hired a lot of people. They've got a lot of capital to invest in this. I, you know, it's not like, you know, online being a startup and they're just operating off of, um, Operating off of uh, venture capital, like Google's got actual, you know, money that they, <laughs> Google's got actual, you know, money that they've saved and generated from this themselves. They've got, you know, all of this, you know, they've got billions of users that they have access to and can advertise the service to. So I think, um, I think Stadia is going to be around for a good long while. I think Google's going to give it at least five years. Um, and if it, you know, and after five years, it still isn't a good service, and they'll probably ax it. Um, that, that's how I'm seeing it. Um, so, yeah, so Bolta says it's hard for him to believe it will be subscription service only, unless it's stupidly high, like 50 to 100 a month, in order to have all triple A publishers on board. I would then eat to either subscription, which you need to buy your game separately, or pay per hour of content. In that case, rate will be shared by Google and publisher on the game being played. And if any of the three, I'm probably not interested. LOL. Uh, let's see. So we'll go for the last. Uh, we'll go for this last reply. He says, "Board board gear says he thinks it'll be a free service, but you have to buy the games and it'll remain in the cloud." I'm probably wrong, but the me but from the media, have the impression that the ISPs in the NA are in North America are slow and bad. They follow speed and are insanely expensive. Insanely exp expensive. I think it's true that CD will be a lot less popular in North America. Well, board gear. Well, uh, I mean, I live in um, I live in the states, so. Um, it, it varies widely from um, state to state. So, you know, in the larger urban centers, um, um, good internet is a lot easier to get a hold of. But especially in the Midwest, um, internet isn't good in the Midwest. There's actually a chain of video rental stores um, that's still around in the Midwest. From not, I could be wrong, but yeah, because the internet is that bad, people can't use Netflix um, in that part of the country. So there's an actual video rental store service that's still around. Because uh, internet is that bad for some people in the states, so um, yeah, the internet is the internet in America can definitely be very um, spotty in some regions. And that is because of companies like Comcast. They, you know, they essentially they stay out. They've said this. They stay out of each other's ways um, because you know, so they, so they don't have to compete with each other, so they can get away with providing the bare minimum service um, to most people. They explicitly. Have, uh, they, they, uh, yeah, you know, the bigger, you know, the executives of these ISPs in America have said that. So people hate Com, Com Comcast and, uh, you know, my ISP is uh, Verizon. I got pretty decent internet, but Verizon isn't isn't a good company. You know, it's just like any other company, but they have to compete with um, Optimum in my region, or um, all, it's owned by a French company, OLT, so they have to compete with each other. So. They don't do stuff like, at least uh, as far as I know, they don't do stuff like data caps in my region. But a lot of um, places in the states will do um, they'll do data caps. So I don't know how, you know, if you have a data cap, I don't know how the hell you're going to be uh, playing Stadia. So you probably aren't going to want to play Stadia. Hell, you're probably not even going to want to download games. Um, you're probably going to just want to buy all your games physically if you have a data cap, which I can definitely, um, I can sympathize with that, um, definitely, because... You know, if you got a data cap, you don't want to be downloading too many games because, you know, you don't want your internet throttled to do, you know, basic stuff like, you know, especially if you use uh, the internet to, you know, check your banking or, you know, um, you know, communicate with people, read the news, you want that to, you don't want to be throttled doing that. So, um, you know, you probably would stick to buying your game physically, but I think, uh, I think we talked about Stadia enough. We're going on to Daily Poll 26 and this one's pretty simple. Um... So, yeah, so Nintendo had did a live stream for the uh, Nindies Showcase, you know, Spring 2019. 
And in my opinion, it was a really good show because they revealed Cuphead and they showed a lot of really cool stuff. There's um, Canvas of Hyrule, which is a sequel to Crypt of the Necrodancer, a game I never played, but I love Zelda, so I'll definitely go all in on that one. Um, so I just asked people, you know, do you plan on picking anything up? And most, uh, 46% of people said they plan to pick up at least one game when it comes out. And, um, yeah, that's me. There's, there's some stuff that I'm going to buy, but I just need to wait, you know, to, I just need to, you know, I just need to save my pennies. So, um, so, you know, so nobody's, so nobody at this point had bought or pre-ordered the game already shown. Five, you know, 17% of people said they're waiting for information on some games before deciding to buy. Um, and they didn't buy pre-order any games and they've got no plans to list out 35%. So Leyran says he's glad that Cuphead's getting a release on another platform. He's talking about Cuphead that got announced for Switch, which very, very cool. Game's perfect for picking up and playing on short bursts on the go. I agree wholeheartedly. Storm Magician says he's not sure yet, likes to wait it out for indie. Some of them get picked up by publishers like Limited Run for a physical release, which is what I normally buy. So yeah, I already have Cuphead on PC, and I've heard rumors of it coming physically to Switch, and I'll probably buy the physical version of Cuphead on Switch just... Just because it would just be cool to have a... I, I'd love to see what sort of box art they do for um, for that. For our Cuphead game. Because the art style in Cuphead is amazing. Um, so Retro84 says, He's definitely interested in Cuphead. I've never gotten to play it. And I've always liked the classic cartoon style that the developers went with. I was hoping there was some news on the Switch version of the Friends of uh, Ringo Ishikawa. But that's okay. I'll... Just be patient, right? Rank. Um, I don't know about um the game that Retro Thirty Four is talking about, but, um, but yeah, but uh, there, there really isn't too many. The last indie game that was really hyped for that uh, was War Groove, and that came out in February. So, yeah. Um, so I, there's not like any indie game that I'm just patiently waiting for. There's some stuff in the Nindies Direct that I saw that's really cool, but it seems like a few months off, and who knows? Um, it depends on how. You know, it depends on how close, like, if, you know, some of these games come out while I'm playing Fire Emblem or Animal Crossing or, you know, you know the bigger Nintendo releases or even some stuff that, you know, I got pre-ordered, like, you know, Catherine on the PlayStation 4, I would be more interested in playing those games than um, the indie games. And, you know, I, either that I can just, you know, grind through my black backlog as well. And so it's like, I like indie games, I want to support smaller studios, but it's just like, gotta balance it out with the backlog and that's... I think that's what it is for a lot of people. Beowulf says he'll definitely pick up Candice of Hyrule, the game I talked about before. I definitely will buy that one as well. It looks pretty cool, and plus, it's 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 it's, it's a Zelda game. That that's uh that's enough. So, Merlin is basically saying he he knows that he's going to get the Zelda Necromancer crossover game at least. Maybe the Dog Sled one because Dog was yeah that Dog Sled. The, he's talking about I forgot what the game's called, but. Um, they had this, um, trailer reveal, and it was about the, um, I think it was the Isharad, or the, whatever, the big race, of the dog sledding race that mushers do in Alaska, um, the I, I dinner rod, whatever, whatever it's called, I can't, I can't name it specifically, but it basically, it's a survival game where you're mushing dogs, and you have to take care of your dogs, and you have to, you know, find the wild, it looks pretty cool, and it, the art style looks pretty good. So, um, I definitely would be interested in picking that one up. So, like, uh, like one one one. Yeah, I, li I like dogs as well. So that would be a pretty cool one. And I like, uh, I like survival games. I like story-based games. That d definitely looks like it focuses on story. Um, some of the writing did seem a bit, I don't know, it seemed like a bit cringy to me. But, you know, sometimes with trailers, it's hard to tell, you know, if the writing is going to be really good or really bad. Because you can have a bad trailer, then it turns out to be a good, you know, game or movie and vice versa. But uh, let's move on to Daily Poll 27. Uh, do you use mods? And um, yeah, this was, you know, this one that popped in my head because it seemed interesting. Uh, Twidget, uh, subscriber to the channel and longtime Daily Poll participator, had also done a poll on the mods. And he, I knew what I had said before is that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that someone did a poll uh, asking about mods, and I was just unsure, like, I just couldn't find it, and then Twitcher sent me a DM linking me to his poll, and I put it in there just because, um, you know, I, I just want to, I wanted to, that's just how I am. Um, so, you know, 10 people said they've modded every game they can, 6 people said they modded, um, they've never modded a game, 
12 people have modded at least 10 games, 5 people have only modded 1 game, uh, or, you know, I've modded, uh, five, you know, 12 people say I've modded more than 1 game but less than 10. So most people have modded um, a game from what I'm getting, especially with, with you know, Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition um, allowing mods. It makes mods accessible to consoles. Definitely not as accessible as it is on PC where you could mod games where the developers didn't even intend for you to mod them unlike you know with console games where it has to be something that's that has to be built into um, the game itself like you know Bethesda did with Fallout um, uh, Fallout 4 and Skyrim uh, they didn't you know only on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox one no mo no mods on the switch version which um, is expected I mean it's surprising it's surprising enough that the game's even running on the switch but Let's go with, uh, let's go into the reply. So Hyper Weasel says, depending on the modding support and quality, I will. Simple cheap mods like invincibility, unlimited ammo are just boring and I tend to avoid. Uh, so Thomas JCG says, every single open world game and or sandbox game is ripe for modding everything else. Not so much. Also, yeah, so he's just asking me about the options, you know, just yes or no. But I, I don't want to go with like simple yes or no's for the polls because I want, I want it to be sort of engaging to people, but. I guess, yeah. But, you know, most people will criticize. Um, I'll usually, a lot of my poll options, a lot of my daily polls will get criticized, and um, I'm fine with that. I encourage it because, um, you know, if you got input from me, as long as, you know, you're constructive about it, then um, I can use that to make the daily polls better. So if you got criticism, you don't like a daily poll, then uh, then be vocal about it. I don't, I don't want you to think that, um, you know, um, you know, criticizing the daily polls is a bad thing because it definitely is a good thing. Um, but, you know, if you do, you know, I can't control what you say, but if, you know, you have any criticism, just, um, try and be, uh, constructive about it, because, um, you know, I want to, uh, I want to make the polls better, and I can't do it if, unless you have something specific, unless you're, you have something, some sort of specific beef with the poll that you want to express. So, Ethan Saito says, I remember going on the Civ forums as bats to find some people to play with. They took me into a team speak and trying to walk me through installing all the mods they were using and up breaking my game for a while. Luckily, I eventually figured out that Steam can verify the integrity of the game files. Now everything's fixed. Uh, yeah, I messed around with some, I think I messed around with some mods for Civilization, but I always stuck to, um, I always stuck to vanilla, um, in Civilization because I, I just never found anything, like, too interesting. And, like, the one map I tried to get working never really worked on Civ 5, so never really um got into modding civilization. Um but yeah. But yeah no Steam uh, yeah Steam can verify game file integrity so if you mess anything up while modding you can go and do that. So little buddy Rem always looks for unofficial patches but don't attempt too much beyond that unless the community support is excellent. Yeah. Yeah so yeah what Rem's talking about is that um this Fallout games especially they'll just have unofficial patches. Um well, not Fallout for Scott for Bethesda games, and it's like on Battle Net, one of the mo not Battle Net on Beth D Net, the Bethesda Net, um, one of the most popular mods is the unofficial patch, just fixing um, clear issues that Bethesda was too lazy or they just missed in their game. So, uh, Jarrah Oil is pretty active in the polls. Um, sorry, I lied. He said ten games, but it was less than ten. The moment you realize that the true effect that Rotten Tomatoes really had on you. Um, yeah, so Retro, uh, Retro actually never modded the game before, unless you really want calling the <laughs> going into the files of old window games and changing the BMP mid that wall files just for laughs. Uh, he's not going to count that. Um, yeah, so I believe he says this is the definition of modding. Um, 